Benchmarking AI can really become a blood sport where, aside from how many extra billions you can raise for your company by claiming your model is the best, it has turned into this ego-fueled posturing where the desire for the prestigious title outweighs genuine scientific research. So you get to see situations like OpenAI and XAI employees arguing over on Twitter where in fact both of their companies are terrible at being transparent about the topic they are arguing about. And with the release of Grok 3, we were reminded how terrible AI companies are at making charts, like look at this. I think it's pretty obvious that they're stretching the bar longer to make Grok 3 look better. But of course, they are not the only one to do this. So as benchmarks have now become promotional ads for AI nerds, a simple performance increase can now get you hundreds of thousands new users. Which begs the question, how easy is it to have foul play in benchmarking? So for today's video, I'll be going through different ways of how people can rig benchmarks, for educational purpose of course, and finally address why I keep on saying Chapa Arena is not a highly regarded benchmark anymore. But before we dive into it, let me just share with you an RTX 4080 Super giveaway sponsored by NVIDIA that I will be running during their GTC event between March 17th and 21st, 2025. During GTC, which is NVIDIA's annual flagship AI and developer conference, there will be various big announcements, events, and sessions you can attend both in person or virtually. This is one of the best times to learn from global experts on how generative AI is impacting industries and society as a whole. This includes virtual virtual sessions where you can attend special training, live stream demos, and exclusive talk live streamed from the venue. For me, I will probably go to sessions like Frontiers of AI and Computing, a conversation with Meta's chief AI scientist Jan LeCun and SVP of NVIDIA research Bill Daly, and Quantum Computing, where we are and where we are headed by Jensen Huang and 14 CEOs from the quantum computing industry. But if that's not your cup of tea, you can try sessions like Accelerate Inference on NVIDIA GPUs by the CTO of Together AI, or how to build an agentic AI system using the best tools and frameworks by Technical PM and Director of Engineering of NVIDIA. So you can virtually discover the latest breakthroughs in generative AI and NVIDIA technologies from subject matter experts at GTC25. And by virtually attending these sessions, you can join my giveaway for an RTX 4080 Super. All you have to do is to take a selfie of yourself attending the live virtual sessions that are available during GTC, submit it down in my Google Forms, and boom, you can learn and possibly earn a GPU at the same time. And of course, the yearly banger keynote by the NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang will be happening on Tuesday, March 18th at 10 a.m. Pacific time. So definitely don't miss out on that. For all GTC sign up links, I'll also leave them down in the description, so go sign up now. And thank you, NVIDIA, for sponsoring this video. Anyways, the idea of benchmarking is simple. You train an AI and test it on data that it was not trained on to see how well it generalizes. And to make this video easier to understand, let's pretend there's an ultra evil research lab called the Evil Corp with the goal of cheating their way to the top. So training on the test data, which is the data to check how well a model generalizes outside its training data, is one of the easiest ways to cheat on public benchmarks, where all the data are available. Kind of like studying a test answer keys instead of the actual materials before the exam. But memorizing data like that is too easy to get caught, because a simple answer reshuffling on the multi-choice question benchmarks can easily spot models that memorize the benchmark questions instead of truly understanding them. So Evil Corp figured out that you could simply prompt engineer an LLM to rephrase the test data for you through different sentence structure, formats, and even languages. This method is capable of making a simple 13B model be a giant model like GPT-4 and also bypass any decontamination measures back in 2023. But when big AI models nowadays are being trained on the entire internet, sometimes rephrasing would be included indirectly through forum discussions on benchmarks that could also contaminate the training data, which makes this a great experience excuse for Evil Corp to train on public benchmarks that have test data available on the internet. So to really evaluate Evil Corp's AI model, private benchmarks are a common way for a third party to evaluate the actual performance without sharing their test data to the world. But here's the catch. Since Evil Corp wouldn't share their proprietary model weights to any other companies to prevent their million dollar model from leaking, all private benchmarks then have to evaluate the model's performance through an API call. To put it simply, private benchmarks would need to send their private test data to the company server that can run the query through their model, then send the results back to the private benchmarks. So other than the fact that the private test data is actually exposed to Evil Corp, and all they have to do is to take a sneak peek at the test data, they could also throw in a dumber model, let's say a beta version, at the private benchmark first, collect the private benchmark data, then train the more powerful model on that private benchmark. But you would think that the private benchmark would only be sending the test questions to the company, and the test answers are only compared 
on the private benchmark side, well, having the question is already as valuable as having the answer because Evil Corp can just have people manually solve those questions and make the answer themselves to train the model. And to be honest, Evil Corp could just fund a private benchmark and only give access to themselves or their friends. A very recent case of this is the hardest math benchmark called Frontier Math by Epoch AI. The CEO never disclosed that they were funded by OpenAI and OpenAI even had access to their private benchmark test answers, which is something Epoch AI's mathematicians weren't even aware of. Maybe there's a catch as to why O3 is so incredibly good at Frontier Math compared to other models. So the next idea to evaluate it is maybe through democracy, human users voting their preferences. Chapa Arena is the current largest benchmark where users can compare generated responses from two different models and pick one that they prefer, which can then be used to rank model preference. So it is much more difficult to game democracy. Or is it? You see, one of the major flaws human preference has is that we would prefer things that are well presented to us, even if they are incorrect, over things that are actually correct but badly presented to us. Let's say when you are given a very difficult math question that you do not understand, would you believe that A, which is a detailed step-by-step -step explanation, is correct, or B, a direct answer with only a few working is correct? Well, obviously, I will pick A even if A is wrong and B is correct, because that is just how human preference work. So when all the current available models are able to answer questions that the average person doesn't know the answer to, in order to score well on this human preference benchmark, the model doesn't have to be accurate. It just needs to appeal to us instead. Which is one of the reasons why Chatbot Arena is not an ideal candidate for evaluating a model's accuracy in a specific field. And Evil Corp can also take the preference data generated from the top models and fine tune on it, kind of like benchmark maxing. But another reason is that the ELO system can be easily by Evil Corp if they can watermark the generated answers of a model. From one of the latest research paper called Idiosyncrasies in LLMs, they found out that given the same prompt, all models would have an identifiable distribution of words that they commonly use. So technically, Evil Corp can make a model classifier with up to 97% accuracy to find their models in the chatbot arena and vote for their model only. But the problem is, there are currently more than 205 models on the arena, so they only have a 1% chance to to encounter their own model to rig the ELO ladder, which makes it incredibly hard to do it manually, especially with the volume of other human voters. So instead of needing to vote around 10,000 times to boost the ranking of your model, Evil Corp can exploit the fact where every vote changes the ELO score for all models. And by classifying all 205 models and simulating their ranks, it is way easier to push other models that are not from the Evil Corp down the rankings instead of trying to bump Evil Corp's model up. This should the requirement from voting 10,000 times to only around 100 times, allowing them to effectively move up 15 places. But of course, you would still have other human voters that will calibrate the ladder ranking. So to top the ladder, the model itself still needs to be incredibly good. Anyways, these are the current concerns about the current state of benchmarking AI models. While I am still coming from a pretty cynical perspective, I still feel that understanding which aspects are currently exploitable is still as important. And to get a truly fair benchmark, the condition for that in the current AI world is pretty much impossible. The most fair way to evaluate models that I could think of is spending the same amount of compute for all the models, but there's no way AI companies will want to reveal their competitive edge like that, especially in a setting where a third party is hosting their model to benchmark it. So maybe instead of looking at all these benchmarks, and picking evaluation methods and graphics, how about we just all pick our favorite models and call it a day? Because obviously, benchmarks aren't representative of the actual user experience for LLMs, so if you you prefer one model over the other for your use case, you are probably right, because benchmarks can only give you information to a certain extent. So in my humble opinion, the end game of the AI race will be won not by performance, but by how easy it is to use, how well it is integrated with the user experience, and of course, brand loyalty. And if you enjoyed today's benchmark papers and wish to learn more, I'll be covering them more in detail in my newsletter in the future. Aside from that, you would receive a weekly email about the latest and the juiciest research papers breakdown so if you're a fan of learning the cutting edge of AI, definitely go check it out. And thank you guys for watching. A big shout out to Andrew Laschelius, Chris Ledoux, Degan, Miguelim, Robert Zaviasa, Louis Muck, Ben Shaner, Marcelo Ferraria, Zane Sheep, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow me on Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.